I want to start by saying that I am not a professional colorist. Please remember that, that the way I work is a combination of trial and error and a collection of YouTube tutorials that I've watched over the years. If you're here to learn proper technique, this isn't the video for you. But if you want to learn how to turn work around quickly and efficiently, then you might pick something up from this video. Okay, I've encountered more technical issues recording this video than I think I have in my entire career. In fact, this is my third time shooting it, only to realize that about a quarter of the way through filming, my camera grabbed focus on the back wall and never found my face again. Now, I'm not gonna redo this for a fourth time. I think the information is there, and you'll get face cam for about a quarter of it, and then the rest, I'm just gonna remove it. All right, let's break this down from a fundamental level. Bonus points if anyone gets that reference. Gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. So all these clips have the same node tree, Anytime I open a project, I'm using this same power grade setup. They are all set up with a color space transform, sort of bookending the majority of our corrections. This first one's taking this black magic pocket cam footage and taking it from um, BMD film and turning it into DaVinci wide gamut. And the second one has labeled 709 is taking that DaVinci wide gamut and turning it into a proper rec 709 conversion. From there, in this, I'm sorry, can I help you, sir? So the entirety of these 12 clips are in a proper 709 workspace, and then they all have this same stylet applied. The stylet is basically what I use to tie all the clips together, right? So if I'm working on a project, I want one generally cohesive look just across the board. This LUT is, uh, doing the heavy lifting for the project. Everything else is just there to balance to that LUT. So I'm not going to go through each one of these clips and grade everything from scratch. I've done some work on some of these. I'm going to show you each of my nodes and how and why I use them. But we will start on this one for exposure. I absolutely love the HDR wheels. I just want to boost that exposure up, keeping an eye on my scopes on that waveform. For the most part, this clip is well exposed as it was. I just want to bring it up just a touch, just to get into these shadows a bit, right? That opens it up. A few different ways that I will attack white balance. Typically the easiest, quickest, is just grab the, uh, the temperature slider. Just dial that in. 220 is good just cools it off a bit but we can also you can also touch your offset a little bit the only reason i'm not a big fan of moving the offset wheel is because it starts to adjust the exposure a little bit more otherwise i will then still live in these hdr wheels just move this wheel around to get us to a point a little bit cooler i dig that it's a good look moving down the tree we have our saturation node I do this one a little different. I have the color space on this node set up to HSL and channel two, our saturation channel is the only one active. And I found that this gives me the level of saturation control that I like by just playing with our gain and gamma wheels. Love the subtlety of the color I can push into an image. It's just the gain wheel. It's a very subtle level of saturation by having this extra control, right? So like I can pump a lot of saturation in with those gamma controls. And this is where, and this is where we're affecting saturation based on those, those levels in the image, right? So this gain, I'm hitting more of those highs. Uh, your gammas are going to be more of those mids. And obviously if you really want to get into it and, and play with your lift, you could but I rarely ever touch that lift. I mean, that's kind of a, a cool deset right there. But but you can really start to to play with the the levels of saturation in the image. But you know, nine times out of ten, I'm just grabbing my gain and I'm increasing that. Right, like that's that's good. Maybe I'll take just a touch out of those mids just so it's not too aggressive of saturation. Moving down the line into our contrast. There's ample ways to adjust your contrast in an image. This is where Resolve is very similar to Photoshop. There's more than one way to do something, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. 
uh, typically in fast turnaround, you know, the day to day when I'm just trying to like crank out a few LUTs to pass off to a post team. I'm just grabbing our contrast, dialing it into whatever point I want. Uh, and then obviously adjusting where that statue or the contrast lives with our pivot. You can also grab our curves, bring those down, really punch those. Uh, even the contrast in the HDR, right? Now we're not affecting saturation, which I think is a cool way to inject contrast into the image. Multiple ways to do something. Find what works for you and your workflow. For the sake of this, we're just going to add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to call that good. Down the line once again into our setup for my highlight and shadow recovery. So we'll just say on this shot, we'll just pump that in there like yeah we want a really punchy image i'm really liking what that's doing to the highlights we'll say now i can come in look over here at this waveform see that uh while we're not clipping i want to detail to our shadow area well, that's when i'll come in and then open that up just a little bit right we're extending these values and now we still have a touch of that contrast in there we've just opened up those shadows a bit moving on to the curves and this is my favorite node. And I live in this one a fair amount for, for, for minor tweaks, right? This is another one that is invaluable for balancing between two cameras, three cameras, whatever your setup is. But the reason I love this one is because I have this one free set up with all of my colors already selected just across the board. My hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, hue luminance. If you take anything from this video, it's setting up a curves node in a power grade that already has all of your values selected because like this is an incredible time saver for a, a power grade setup say i just want to attack the the total the totality of my blues right it's far easier to just remove one and grab and adjust as needed definitely i use blue as the perfect example on here because i want to take some of that like blue out of those pages right and make that a little wider i can see some yellow over there in the uh the stone from there we're just gonna remove a little bit still keeping the saturation on that skin and if for whatever reason i pull too much i know i can grab these reds and i can crank that up as well but i'm gonna leave that just about there same with the hue right I already have this selected, so I'm not even now looking, trying to find my points. I'm looking at my image and I can just go through and adjust my hue really quickly. This node right here is a time-saving node. And I'm telling you, add something like this to your power grade setups. This is the same with my, my saturation. This thing is already set up in my power grade, All right? So when I'm applying this thing, it is already set up. Everything that comes after that style, let think of that as like finishing your look. So say on this one, right, we're going to go more of a silhouette. So on this lift gamma gain, right, like now I'm, I'm adding the style, right? I'm increasing the style of said style let. And then on this color now is when I'm adjusting or, or modifying the color of the style let. So maybe we're going to go a little bit more. We're going to cool that off, add a little yellow, sure. This is just minor adjustments to the LUT. So this is a little ob obscure one, I'll say. The film LUT. I like footage that's got a little texture to it, a little filmic texture. This is where I'll kind of jump in and I'll add a little bit of a glow. Clearly not that much. But we're just going to add a little bit of a glow. Uh, if I'm not using a glow, I might add something I've been really into, a little aperture diffraction. Right, another thing. Basically, this node is here to give the film look. Right, it can be the same even if I went with halation. Now maybe I want to add a little halation that's going to sneak in somewhere. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it kind of sneak in there, right? This is style points, right? Whatever we need to make this look more filmic, right? And then from here, I can also add another and you know i want to add halation and i want to add some glow and i can just kind of build on this look grain is my final step 
You can use film convert. You can use anything. I'm just using resolves built in because it just runs a little bit smoother as I'm recording. And this is where you're going to go in and you're going to add just your bit of grain, right? We'll crank it up just to show on here. And this in conjunction with everything else is how we round out the look. And on this final node, uh, something that I just call <laughs> tweaks. These are very minor tweaks that are just going to help either tie everything together or just take care of some minor color cast, take care of some minor exposure issues. A lot of the time I'm living in my log wheels and I'm just balancing my shadows and keeping my blacks black. I'm looking over here at my per or my waveform. And again, there's probably not the best image to show for this because there's nothing that's pure black. We're just making just some minor color adjustments. That is how I go about grading. I let how I've gotten it in camera dictate the color that I do. So really the best tip that I can give you is using a node tree, a power grade setup that works for you, that works for what you create, that works for your day to day. Build a power grade that you can utilize across the board. Uh, look, if you're interested, I'll link to my power grades down below. Uh, it's going to save you a ton of time if you just want to pick them up for yourself so you're not having to rebuild this. And again, you might find to yourself that you don't need anything post style let, right? You only grade up to that style let, you know, kill all those and, 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 sit and resave this as your new power grade. Whatever works for you, that's what works best. Don't listen to someone who tells you the way you do it is wrong. If it works for you uh, and it gets you to the end point the way you're envisioning it, then in my opinion, that's right. And that's all that matters. But I think matters more is that you are liking this video uh, and you're subscribing. And down below in the comments, let me know uh, what else you want to see. Was this enough about my workflow? Do you want to see this in action? You know, start to finish on a, on a, on a project? Do you regret watching this because I'm not an actual colorist and you learn nothing? Let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. I cannot thank you all enough. And uh, see you in the next one. Peace.